Hello people, um, in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you about bindable functions. Okay, so let's get started. Um, here we're going to be learning about, like, I'm going to be using multiple different skills that I've taught you in previous tutorials. Um, multiple different skills from the advanced section and also the beginner section. So it is advised that you have watched all my other tutorials before you start watching this tutorial and that you understand it all. Okay, I'm just going to plug my charger in before my battery runs out. Uh, right, let's get started. If you go to insert, uh, part, okay, we've got a part here now. Insert spawn, uh, if I can find it. Where are the spawns? Here we go. Insert spawn, <coughs> and... Uh, color code it how you want. I make my spawns purple. Parts green. Okay. Anchor them. There we go. And now we can start to add the script. If I add a script into my part. Let me just move my part over here. Okay, inside the script we're going to want an event when the brick is touched. So script dot actually no let's see part equals script dot parent part dot uh, touched connect function and okay so here's our touched event and uh, let's let's use it now okay so basically what a bindable function is is that it's a function that you can put into another script that this script can use, if that makes sense. Uh, I'll show you what it is in a minute. But basically, say I had two parts here, and say only a certain person could touch these parts, and you don't want any other users touching the part. So if one person touches the part, and they're not on the person or admin list, then they die, and if they are on the admin list then they can survive but what if we had like a thousand parts in the game that did this and we wouldn't want to put a, a list of admins into every single brick because say we wanted to add a new person to that list we'd have to update that for every single brick and that would take a long time so what we can do instead is we can use a bindable function uh, put the list of admins into one script that all of these bricks would use okay so that's what we're going to do now let me just make the bindable function insert script into workspace uh, if I can find it okay let's call this list of admins right and let's say Let's make a list admins equals player one because that's what we're going to be called when we enter play solo. Uh, peace pod Bob and Henry. Okay, so this is our list of admins. Um, now let's make the bindable function. Bindable function is actually a it's an object that you can insert into something so if you go to insert basic object you can find bindable function sits here just double click it insert it into the script and here we go here's our bindable function let's give it a name let's call it uh, get list okay our function is going to be called get list now we want to uh, when you're using a bindable function you use something called invoke which is to call the function. It's like another word for calling the function. So let's say script dot get list. Uh, I'll explain all this afterwards. If it's not making sense. On invoke equals function um, and then name because we're going to pass in a uh, pass in a argument to this function. Now what this does is when I use this script inside the part to call this function I can pass in a parameter 
of the name of the person that touches this brick, okay? And that will go here. So when we've invoked this function, this bindable function, when we invoke it, then it calls this function that I'm making here, and it gives it a parameter of name, okay? So we can use this name now. We can say, we can loop through all these admins and check if the person that has touched the brick, uh, if their name is equal to any one of these admins, then we're going to want to allow them to touch it, or we're going to make the brick do something. But that's not what this script is doing. All this script here, uh, the bindable function is doing is, it's checking to see if the name is actually in this list of admins. If it is, we're going to return true. Yes, it is in the name. If it's not, we'll return false, okay? So, uh, let's make a new variable called uh, is admin. So we'll set it to false for the meantime because we don't know if it's in the name yet. Okay, so is admin equals false. Now let's loop through this list here. So for i v in pairs, this is a thing you should have learned in one of my previous tutorials. So if you don't know what i v in pairs does, then look at my previous tutorials. Okay, so we're going to loop through the list admins, and we're going to say if uh, name equals v at any point, then is admin equals oops, is admin equals true. Okay, because it is in the name of admins. Uh, so once we've looped through all of these things. Let's actually break out of this loop because once we've got we've got the um, value, we know the name is in this list. We can break out of the loop. Okay, so we've broken out of the loop. Is admin is now set to true because let me just correct the variable name. Is admin is now set to true because we now know that the name is inside this list of admins. Okay, so now we're going to do a second check. We're going to say if is admin is equal to true, then no worry, I'll explain the whole thing afterwards if it's not making sense. Return true. Else return false. Now we could have just returned is admin actually, but I just want to do it this way so it makes more sense to people. Okay, so basically, if is, ma is admin is set to true, if we now know that the name is inside this list of admins, we're going to return true because it's, yeah we're going to return true, it's it's in the list. But if it's not in the list, so if someone unauthorized has touched a brick, we're going to return false. Now, let's use this function here. So when the part is touched, we're going to get the player name equals, we actually need a parameter, hit, or the part that has been touched. Okay, so player name equals Hit dot parent dot name. Okay. Actually, first we need to test if it's a player. So let's say uh, humanoid equals hit dot parent find first child humanoid. Okay. This is just a test to see if what we've what's touched the brick is actually a player. If it's a character because you may get a car that touches the brick accidentally and it's not actually a player so we don't want it to test if a car hits the brick we want to test if a player hits the brick okay so if humanoid equals true that's the easy way of doing it. if it's equal to true just say if humanoid then player name equals hit dot parent dot name okay now I've got the player name so let's now set a invoke so we need to invoke this bindable function we need to actually call this function okay so uh, is admin we're going to set a new variable it doesn't have to be called is admin I'm just going to call it is admin so that it makes more sense because we're going to test if the player is an admin okay so is admin equals uh, game dot workspace dot list of admins dot get list invoke and we're going to pass through the player name okay so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to call this function 
get list in by invoking it. So we're going to use this built-in function, and what this does is it calls the get list function. That's all it does, and we're going to pass in the uh, argument of player name. Okay. So now, if we open up the list of admins, we can see that we've got a parameter here, and it's it's asking for the name, and that's exactly what we've done here. We've passed through the player name to this function. What it's going to do is it's going to look uh, through this list of admins by looping through here and it's going to see if the name that we've passed through is equal to any one of these names here okay that's all it's going to do now then what I've done is I've set this function here I've set the return to this variable here called is admin um, I can even call it something else I can call it check I'm just going to call it check just because I can so what it's going to do is it's going to return either one of these. It's going to return either true or false to this variable here called check. Okay, so check is now equal to either true or false. Um, so let's do something with it. Let's say if check equals true, then uh, what should we do if it's equal to true? Um, doo -doo -doo. Let me set an else first. Else humanoid dot health equals zero. Okay, so if the player is not an admin, then we're going to kill the player. If it is an admin, then we're going to say uh, brick dot no uh, part dot brick color equals brick color dot new bright yellow okay so that's what we're going to do here if it's an admin we're going to set the bit color to yellow if it's not we're going to kill the player okay um, okay this tutorial is getting quite long uh, I might make a second part no I'm not let's just carry on so this should work now because what we've done is we've checked to see if the player name is in the list of admins and we've done something to the check variable here okay so again I will explain all of this afterwards if it's not making sense now let's go and copy some of these bricks okay so you can see how I'm copying the bricks and then if I want to change the list of admins all I've now got to do is go into this list here and edit the list and if I didn't have the bindable function what I would have to do is I'd have to go into each individual brick and change the list inside each brick okay so you can see how much easier it is by using a bindable function rather than just separately calling each function inside each brick okay so let's go ahead and test yep you see how the brick turns yellow when I touch it because player one here is an admin but if I were to edit the list take player one out okay you see how easy it is to edit the list all I've got to do is edit it once I don't have to go into each each brick to edit the list so what I can do here is touch the brick and I die oh I violently exploded but you see and that is how it works all I've now got to do is change this little list here okay so now that I've done it I'm going to explain each bit of this bindable function so that you understand it okay so what I've done here is part dot touch I've touched the part check the to see if the player is actually a player and not just any other object um, player name is now equal to the name of the player okay that's obvious now now we're going to pass this player's name into the bindable function okay the player name is now being passed into the function and to call the function I've invoked it uh, by using the bindable uh, not bindable uh, built-in function called invoke okay and I've set the return to this variable here okay so when this bindable function when it returns either true or false it returns that value into this variable here called check now you can see how I've set this out here this main line that I've highlighted this is the main line that is going to be new to you that you don't that you haven't uh, heard of yet uh, script dot get list okay we've got the 
find a function dot on invoke so whenever something invokes this bindable function as I've done in this script here I've invoked it here okay so what this thing here does is says when something invokes it then call this function here this function doesn't have a name because it's already set uh, it's already set equal to this invoke thing so whenever I invoke it then it's equal to this function here okay so it automatically calls this function when I invoke it okay so now that I've invoked it I've passed through the play name all it has to do now is check to see if the play name is inside this list here if it is then we're going to return true to this variable here if it's not we'll return false to this variable here okay and then all I've done here is I've checked if this is true brick color yellow if it's not kill the player okay and that is how easy bindable function is it's not that hard it's just because I'm using different lines of code and I'm using different things that's what makes it seem harder but it really it's not really that hard okay so if you still don't understand it leave a comment and I'm going to be I might make another tutorial explaining further what this thing does but if you still don't understand it yet leave a comment and I'll I'll answer your comment okay um, I'm going to want to make some GUI tutorials after this now so I'll, I won't be making any more advanced tutorials anymore um, maybe after the GUI tutorials I will be making more adva uh, advanced ones but now I'm going to be focusing on making the GUI tutorials as many people have asked me to do so okay so I hope you understand it leave comments uh, do whatever you want uh, just keep going over it try and understand it okay so until then I'll see you in the GUI tutorials okay bye